We'll begin by exploring what physics covers. In the same way that geometry begins with a few axioms, everything we will talk about in this course can be expressed in terms of just a few quantities. Since everything else is defined in terms of those quantities, those quantities themselves can't be defined. What would we define them in terms of? But these basic fundamental quantities are things that we have a good idea of, even if we can't exactly define them, for the most part at least. The four indefinable fundamental quantities that we need to worry about in this course are distance, mass, time, and electric charge. The first three we'll start using right away. Electric charge we won't get to until the second semester. At the very end of the second semester, if time permits, we'll get to a few more fundamental indefinables, but for the great majority of this course, everything we'll learn about will be in terms of these quantities distance, mass, time, and electric charge. So I claim these quantities can't be defined in terms of other things. Let's check out that claim. The dictionary definition of distance is that it is a length, but then length is defined as a distance. So to define one, you need the other. That's not to say that the concept is invalid. Far from that, it's just that it's so fundamental that it doesn't depend on anything else. Then mass. Mass is a word used for a lot of things in the English language. In the 1981 American Heritage Dictionary, the physics definition is definition number six. The definition here isn't quite what we'll use in this course, but it's good enough for now. Once this definition brings up acceleration, it goes on to tell us what mass is not, namely weight. You might have heard a definition in chemistry that mass is the amount of matter in an object, but that just gives a name to something we can't define any other way. The dictionary definition goes on to detail that mass relates to energy and to speed, which is sort of true, depending on how you interpret the special theory of relativity, which sadly is beyond the scope of this course. It turns out that in physics, we have two different ways to think of mass. How difficult it is to accelerate an object, and how strongly an object interacts with the gravitational field. These seem like two different things, but as closely as we can check, they are always exactly equal to each other. Physicists are super suspicious of coincidences like this, and sure enough, Einstein's general theory of relativity tells us they are in fact the same thing. But that tells us some shocking things about the structure of the universe which, again, are regrettably beyond the scope of this course. What about electric charge? Electric charge is the property responsible for electric phenomena. Okay, what are electric phenomena? Why anything that depends on electric charge? Does that tell us what charge actually is? Well, it tells us that charge is fundamental. And here this is telling us some things about the properties of electric charge, that it has negative and positive values, which is something that mass doesn't. Mass, as far as we know, is only positive. So these two quantities, though they are difficult to define, we do know some things about them. And finally, time. You're probably all familiar with what time is, but you've probably also at some time wondered about what it actually is. I'm sorry to tell you that physics is not going to make that any more clear for you. That's not to say that you won't learn things about time, but what you learn won't make it any less mysterious. In that sense, this dictionary definition doesn't disappoint. Definition begins with telling you what time is not. It's non-spatial, so it's not space. Though like space, it's continuous, it's a continuum. Unlike space, we can't go anywhere in time. We just have to go irreversibly from the past through the present to the future. Or could it be possible for moments in time to go from the future to the past? Is there any reality to any moment besides now? So that's a fundamental difference from distance, which we can see all at once. Time, we progress through, we step through, in an inexorable way, and we don't seem to have much control over that. It turns out that's not exactly true, but for practical purposes, it's the way it is. The second definition tells us how we can quantify differences in time. 
algorithm using some regularly repeating process as a clock. You can doubtless think of all sorts of philosophical difficulties with this idea, but in practice it seems to work very well. So time intervals really do seem to have meaning. I want to comment on the first statement in this slide that time is non-spatial. By Einstein's special theory of relativity, time and space actually aren't independent of each other. They aren't exactly interchangeable, and they aren't the same, but they aren't completely unrelated either. So before when I said that physics is the most understandable science, well, it seems that the more we understand, the more we learn that what we thought we knew might not quite be the way things really are. Augustine, an early saint of the Christian church, wondered about time and pondered how difficult it is to define. It truly is puzzling, but whatever it is, physics as we understand it is nothing without time. So I want you to read this definition, even pause the video and read the definition. And then I want you to think about something. The second paragraph it says that I say with confidence that if nothing passed away, there would be no past time, and if nothing were still coming, there would be no future time, and if there were nothing at all, there would be no present time. So Augustine is saying that time depends on the rest of the universe, that time depends on change, that if there's no change, then there is no time. He's not saying that there's no way to quantify time, or there's no point in time. He's saying that there isn't any time. What do you think of that? Do you agree with that, that time is actually dependent on things happening in the universe? Or would time happen even if everything were frozen and boring and nothing goes on? With our four fundamental quantities, they're the basis of all physics, we need to quantify them to quantify anything else in physics. So the basic units we'll use in this course are the so-called SI units, SI being the initials of the French name of the system. These are basically the metric system of units that you should have already learned. The base unit of distance is the meter. The base unit of mass is the kilogram. Why not the gram, which has no quantifying prefix? Because a meter is a substantial length on a human scale, the gram is pretty small, humanly speaking. So we make the kilogram the base of mass because it's more human scaled. For electric charge, the base unit is the coulomb whatever that is. We don't have much intuition of how big an electric charge is, so the coulomb, it is. It turns out that the coulomb is a pretty big charge all by itself, but when you run it through a circuit, it's not so daunting. So it is what it is. The base unit of time is the second, which is about the time between human heartbeats. Because distance, mass, charge, and time are all the fundamental quantities of physics, all the other quantities we'll develop in this course are defined in terms of them. Consequently, all of the units for those other quantities will be defined in terms of the units for these fundamental quantities, the meter, kilogram, coulomb, and second. That's all. And it turns out that's entirely enough.